Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm J.D. Paidya. I'm the director of the Rutgers Institute of Data Science, Learning, and Applications. Uh, and this is essentially our response uh, to the pandemic, you know, what the Institute tried to do to, to help with respect to this. Um, and this is joint work with my colleagues in the School of Public Health and the School of Communication and Information at, at Rutgers. So uh, I did want to talk about one of the key problems that we saw essentially all through last year as the pandemic sort of uh, unfolded. And that was the issue with uh, insufficient testing and, and preparedness. And effectively, this was uh, visible all, you know, this was reported on by all of the, the news media, whether it was conservative or liberal. In fact, the New York Times put this up, you know, is your state doing enough coronavirus testing? Um, and the answer, of course, was, was no at the start of the pandemic, but for quite a long period of time, you know, all the way through uh, the, the summer as well. And even the Wall Street Journal sort of reported that, hey, we really need to carry out sufficient amount of sort of uh, COVID testing in, in order to bring the economy back on, on track. So, you know, from a technology perspective, uh, technology tried to sort of come to the rescue uh, with, with respect to this, uh, given the lack of resources. And what happened was we saw quite a few apps like COVID Near You or How We Feel uh, that came up, which were basically uh, symptom tracking apps. You would report your symptoms and then that information would be aggregated and reported back. Even the CMU app, uh, which Facebook put out, uh, had this interactive map and dashboard. So you would put in your information, it would then be aggregated and then released essentially. Um, so one huge problem that, that we saw with respect to this uh, was privacy. So essentially giving in this information, there was a lot of concern and, and correctly so regarding uh, what would happen to your privacy as you reported such uh, information. And in fact, there was a second problem as well that uh, the, the apps were basically predefining regions. You would get reports for your uh, city, for your state, uh, for the county, uh, but at fixed sort of levels. So what we wanted to look at, we wanted to look at two different things. One was to, to answer this question of specific areas. If you are interested in your local neighborhood or you are interested in a particular region of interest, uh, what was happening with respect to the symptoms? So suppose you had this question, how many people reported feeling symptoms in the past eight days in New York City? Um, or you wanted to look at your local neighborhood or across the state, what, what have you? Um, so we wanted an arbitrary number of queries differing in both sizes and, and regions. I could ask for this, I could ask for this, maybe the, the whole map over there, something small over there, uh, what have you. But you quickly realize that once you allow these sorts of queries, you know, any number of such queries, the privacy problem actually gets way more magnified as well. So essentially, um, no sort of simple aggregate and release mechanism is ever going to be able to, to fully protect your privacy. In fact, with a very small number of queries, I can quickly figure out uh, if, uh, you know, particular information regarding you or whether or not you are contributing your data to, to a survey like this. So what we came up with was actually an app and a framework called COVID Nearby. And uh, basically what we are providing is a formal guarantee uh, called differential privacy. This is a state-of-the-art model that the US Census is using. Uh, in fact, uh, companies are using as well. And it essentially guarantees, I won't go into the math, but uh, intuitively speaking, it guarantees that whether or not you put in your information into any such uh, app or any such collection of data, any such survey, the, your risk or, or the risk to your identity is not magnified. You, you don't have a larger risk simply because you're part of the survey. It's, it's going to be essentially uh, very similar to even if you're not uh, sort of participated as part of this. So, so what we wanted to use was differential privacy and this is a formal guarantee. It's very nice because it guarantees your privacy against privacy attacks today, but also privacy attacks they may, that may be invented way ahead in the future, which we know nothing about. Uh, one problem, however, is that once you try to do this, especially over such spatio-temporal data and over dynamic data, it is very, very difficult to provide sort of utility, um, good answers while ensuring privacy, uh, even if you're doing sort of differential privacy. So what we did was we came up, and, and I don't have time to get into this, but we came up with a unique way of representing the data. So we're still, we created this app uh, that will let you 
put in your symptoms and that will be stored in a secure database. So we are acting as a trusted curator here, but then there's an intermediate representation that is built over this data, uh, which is then used to answer any number of questions over the data to, to ensure that no matter, you know, even if you ask like a thousand questions, uh, the, the privacy risk for anyone does not keep on increasing. It's, it's basically bounded over there. And this app has actually been developed. Um, so there were a bunch of challenges, as I said, from the technical level. Uh, it's spatial temporal data. It keeps changing. You have an arbitrary number of queries. Uh, and actually, if you want people to use it, it really needs to be able to work fast as well. The results have to be usable and they have to work actually for the specific situation at hand, uh, in, in this case, the COVID pandemic. And uh, surprisingly, uh, you know, apart from the technical challenges, one of the biggest challenges was with the, the rapid development effort, uh, getting it certified by the Play Store and the App Store so that we could have it out there. But, but we managed to do that and actually the app is out there. Uh, and if you have a Android phone or iOS, you know, Apple device, you, you absolutely can, can get it and put in the, your data through it uh, with a guarantee of privacy. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out, we have looked at this data and yes, we've gone through the IRB and, and all of that. Uh, the good news is that you can actually get very, very close to the uh, non-private results uh, using uh, these techniques as well. So these uh, bars that you see are basically the non the, the original data and then the private data. The stack bars sort of give you the idea that they are roughly the same, but just to give you a, a better view on a particular date, for example, you can see the heat map for the private versus the original. And as you can see, uh, basically the relative ranking, uh, not just at the county level, but even within counties, it turns out to be exactly the same. So again, I don't have time to go into the details of this, but in terms of hot spot tracking or, or ranking, it's very easy to sort of get exactly uh, similar results and, and you don't lose out on accuracy uh, by sort of doing this. Um, so with that, I'll basically stop um, and, and basically say, yes, you should use the, the app uh, and, and the links are there if, if you want to use it on your Apple device or, or your Android device. And I'll, I'll, I'll stop right there. Thanks.